The Secret Service saw the Jerry and of old productionsies take a great tumblings of whoops bang you for lollipad. Oh, folly, folly made mis. <laughs> the Secret Service was the seventh and final television series, so far, to carry the words filmed in Super Mario Nation and maintained the Super Mario Nation universe's focus on the world of international espionage as previously seen in Joe 90. Yes? Go on. Continue. First airing in 1969, you could be forgiven for having never heard of it, since it only aired in a handful of regions in the UK, received extremely limited international exposure, and has never been repeated since the 1970s. Ah, good morning. The name is Unwin. The series centred around the exploits of Father Stanley Unwin, a country vicar who led a double life as a secret agent. He appears to be an unlikely candidate for espionage work. However, we shall see. After inheriting a revolutionary shrinking device, the Minimizer, from his late friend Professor Humbert, Father Unwin is recruited by British intelligence for a top secret project known as Bishop. British Intelligence Service Headquarters, Operation Priest. Unwin has also been assigned an undercover intelligence agent named Matthew Harding, who now works as the Vicarage Gardener. But whenever the Bishop issues them a mission from his office in Whitehall, Father Unwin and Matthew put aside their pastoral business and spring into action. I've just heard from the Bishop. A mission, Father? An urgent one. Often to the confusion of their housekeeper Mrs. Appleby. Going out? He's only just come in. And the Bishop's assistant, Agent Blake. Something has happened to Captain Scarlet. For most assignments, Matthew is shrunk to one third normal size by the minimizer and then conceals himself inside Unwin's gadget laden case, which then accompanies the father as he sets out for their destination in his prized 1917 Model T Ford, Gabriel. Since no respectable villain would ever suspect a seemingly ordinary parish priest of being a threat... Who is that? Just some stupid clergyman. Colonel White! Father Unwin and the miniature Matthew are able to bamboozle the opposition with ease, as they take on all manner of sabotage and skullduggery in the heart of England. Everything from dastardly enemy agents spying on generals at the local golf course, to suspicious goings on at a health clinic... Oh, may miserum! and even a spot of railway-related robbery. It will require a very unorthodox approach. And whenever things look particularly hopeless, Father Unwin has one more weapon in his formidable arsenal that's guaranteed to flummox the enemy, his own brand of nonsense language known as Unwinese. All that true words, speed of your pen slowed must defeat my eyeballed. I, uh, I didn't quite catch that, sir. The Secret Service was born as the result of a chance meeting between well-known comedy performer Stanley Unwin and Jerry Anderson, when they crossed paths at Pinewood Studios during production of Anderson's 1968 feature film, Doppelganger. Most remarkable. Having long admired Unwin for his many television and film appearances in which he showed off his particular brand of nonsense speech, each man's investor mode, and that was the future's late for his own girl. And so that's what I drove for it, and therefore, that's all I've sucks. Anderson was very keen to include him in his next Super Mario Nation production, and set to work devising a concept that could best utilize the Unwinese he was most known for, despite some misgivings among many of his Century 21 Productions team about the wisdom of basing an entire series around a performer whose style wasn't to everyone's tastes. And he's supposed to be from intelligence. However, Anderson pressed on, and, determined to make the best use of his new show's star, while also avoiding the old problem of having to make his puppets walk, decided that Unwin could also perform all his characters' walking and driving shots for real. Oh, how clever. This also allowed for the opportunity to have the puppet of the shrunken Matthew interacting with the real world without the need to keep building expensive new sets. However, while this may have seemed a good idea on paper, in practice the constant switching from puppets to live action and back again seemed to serve only as a distraction that added little to the overall production beyond the mild glamour of English country location filming. Hey! 
What's going on? Unlike previous Super Mario Nation series, the Secret Service was to be largely grounded in the contemporary world of 1969, albeit with the occasional high-tech aircraft or vehicle if the script required it. Noisy. Exhilarating. The scaling back of the traditional Anderson format that had begun with Joe 90 reached its apex with the Secret Service, with our heroes foregoing any cool supersonic vehicles in favour of pootling to their destination in Gabriel. They don't build cars like Gabriel today. With the only gadgets at their disposal being the minimizer itself and the hearing aids with which Unwin and Matthew kept in touch during missions. I wish you wouldn't inform me of the handy deal, Matthew, and folly for your eyeball. Even one of the most celebrated visual elements of the Jerry Anderson universe, Derek Medding's model effects department, took something of a back seat here, thanks to the smaller number of guest vehicles and action sequences featured in the scripts. After the obvious mass audience appeal of Stingray, Thunderbirds and Captain Scarlet, it's difficult to watch the Secret Service without constantly asking yourself one very important question. What's going on? No. Who exactly was a series about the adventures of an elderly puppet priest supposed to be aimed at? Pigeons! This question was certainly reflected in the show's very limited range of merchandising, and was also to help seal the fate of the Secret Service much earlier than the Century 21 team would have been expecting. All terrible and disastrous Craven. Yes, yes, I, I know. Originally planned as a 26 episode series, the Secret Service came to an end after only 13, following a disastrous first screening for ITC head Lou Grade. I know him. One of the old school. Believing that American audiences would never understand the Unwinese, while overlooking the fact that that was entirely the point, Grade told Anderson to cancel the series and make the switch from Super Mario Nation to live action. What a chance did we stand? While Anderson had been waiting for this moment for many years, and had already begun working on the concept that would soon become UFO, the end of the Secret Service also meant the end of Super Mario Nation at the Century 21 Studios. Well, there's only one thing to do. While the model department got to work on the new live-action series, the puppeteers, some of whom had been with the company for over 10 years, would be laid off at the beginning of 1969. A very painful situation. The Super Mario Nation era had come to an end. Today, 50 years on from its first screening, The Secret Service is still often described as the show that killed Super Mario Nation. Oh dear. Dear me. While this isn't entirely accurate, since the Super Mario Nation shows were by the end of the 1960s becoming increasingly expensive to make and just as hard to sell, the bizarre format and baffling execution of the Secret Service certainly didn't help matters. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea. However, for viewers who have discovered the series on video and DVD in the decades since its premature cancellation, this sometimes awkward hybrid of puppetry and live action Action is an unfairly overlooked celebration of the Super Mario Nation era's greatest achievements. The series maintains the gentle humour and strong characterizations of Joe 90. At last, he's got a parachute. Accompanied by a few exciting special effect sequences and a surprisingly moral core that harkens back to the good old days of Thunderbirds. I believe every man is entitled to at least one mistake but he should try to learn from his mistake and be a better man. Despite not being to everyone's tastes, The Secret Service remains a charming curiosity that serves as a gentle and enjoyable coda to Jerry Anderson's Super Mario Nation era.